Just one warm up, Sufi grind. Inhaling forward, sat, exhaling back, numb. Free up the spine, move quickly. And switch directions. And come to center. Inhale and climb the bond. Excellent. Relax. And we'll begin the Kriya Foundation for Infinity. And the foundation the Kriya is referring to is the pelvic floor. So this Kriya will be working to bring alignment and minor adjustment and opening to the pelvis. And that's the foundation, that's the base for infinite, for the continuum of our energy, of our consciousness to stay in, in motion, to stay in, in movement to stay with the change with the force of life so to begin our fingers are interlaced behind the neck just below the hairline elbows are parted wide just like we did in the heart kriya earlier this week um, but we won't be here for long just a few minutes and we'll have some movement as well from the base of the trunk from the pelvis from the navel Twisting left as you inhale, twisting right as you exhale. Sa, no.
Third eye gaze. Tip of the tongue behind top two front teeth. Moving, being, and breathing from a grounded, rooted, embodied foundation. Be in touch, be in your senses, feel the asana, the movement. Enter into it. about halfway. Keep the elbows parted wide, chest and heart open. Last minute, strong breathing. Inhale, center, apply Moband. Exhale, hold the posture, lengthen the spine, exhale completely, and apply Maha Bandha, root lock, diaphragm lock, suck in the ribs, squeeze them, squeeze the spine, lift the heart, and neck lock, chin in, slightly down. Inhale to relax. Take a few breaths. And we'll continue with the fingers interlaced behind the back. And we'll begin moving alternating up and down through yoga mudra. Fingers interlaced behind the back, you can cross one thumb over the other, and then hinging from the hips, bowing the forehead to the floor as you stretch the arms up and over the back, over the spine. Breath of fire here. I'm still in Sukhasana, right? Yeah, you're still in Sukhasana. <laughs> Or maybe half a full lotus. Okay. Do my sitting bones stay on the ground when I go forward or can they lift up? They can lift up slightly. I think they're likely to. And then you're kind of just balancing on the knees. Most important is going to be the alignment of your spine here. So try to really have the hinge come from the base, the heart, and then the head.
Halfway, steady, coordinated movement with the breath. Steady. Keep stretching the arms up overhead. Over back. Keep a third eye gaze. And now inhale, climb the bond. Exhale, relax. And we'll continue with the legs stretched out straight. And the arms at our sides, fingers pointing to the toes, and we'll, um, the feet, the heels, the toes, feet together, toes pointed, and we'll push up to a back platform pose. So there's a straight line from the toes all the way to the crown of the head. And then we'll return to this perpendicular angle, the hips, L-shaped body. And as we alternate, uh, breath of fire, so strong push-ups, front platform pose, strong core moving from there, and then setting yourself firmly back to the earth before pushing up to start again. Keep the head straight, aligned with the spine. The head drops back slightly, but you don't want to collapse the neck and completely drop the head back. Twenty seconds. Inhale up. Exhale, relax. Take care. And we'll prepare for crow pose. Low squats. So starting from a standing posture. Arms straight out from the shoulders. Feet can be a little more than hip width apart here. And we'll inhale in the standing position. And exhale to take a low squat, keeping the integrity of the torso, back, and spine. 
and not bending the knees over the toes, but keeping them at like the level of the heels. This is the exhale posture, inhaling back up. And see if we can count to 26 repetitions here at your own pace. Inhale, rising up, exhaling back down. Move consciously. Move with the breath. Difference from perhaps just doing this at the gym, from doing it in this moment in yoga, is going to be your awareness your consciousness as you breathe and as you move here tapping into the shakti at the lower triangle in the root chakra When you've done 26, then rest standing in mountain pose. And from mountain pose, when you're ready, we'll stretch the arms up, hugging the ears, keeping the shoulder blades, shoulders down, arms are straight up, and we'll begin folding forward as we exhale, hinging from the hips, forward fold, painting the wall in front of you, and then inhaling to rise back up and taking a slight back bend, exhaling back down. Again, 26 repetitions at your own pace. Try to have the arms hugging the ears the whole time. You may want to have a slight bend in the knees. Moving with the breath. Right. No.
And when you've done 26, then return to mountain pose. Arms at the sides, palms facing forward, shoulders back, heart forward, chin in, light bend in the knees, deeply rooted breaths from the soles of the feet, from the base of the body. Circulating the breath, the blood, your awareness throughout your systems. And now this balanced middle stance will be the exhale and we'll inhale as we open the side body, bringing one arm, stretching overhead and then exhaling back to center, inhaling alternate side. Feet are firmly planted. You're bending from the pelvis. Twenty six cycles. So doing either side is one cycle. Paint the borders of your auric field consciously with your arms, hands, and fingers, with your breath. When you've done roughly 26 repetitions, return to mountain pose. And we'll stay standing and we'll bring the hands to the hips. And from a hip stance, we'll then begin alternately kicking the feet out, pointing the toes straight and doing our best to not bend the uh, knees so much. And as we do that, we'll audibly chant the mantra Hud. And when we chant hut, 
We chant it from the navel. And Har means creative light. So kicking this infinite light, creativity forward. I'll pull up the mantra in just a moment. Wait, are we doing the seated or standing? Standing. I'm just getting the mantra ready in this moment. Give me just a moment here. Um. <laughs> In the meantime, meditating at the third eye. It's kind of a, a secret uh, audio. <laughs> so it's taking a moment, <laughs> but it, it's worth it. Really good version here. I'll share sounds. here for a moment as I explain the next mantra 
and meditation technique, or when you're ready, you can return to Sukhasana. So this yoga set, this Kriya will end with the meditation. And we're going to silently meditate on the mantra, Had Had Mukande. Again, Had is creative light and Mukande is liberator or liberation. So meditating silently this mantra for creative liberation, as we mentally vibrate Had, we're gonna draw the navel in once, halfway, twice fully and then with mukande still the navel is drawn in and we're pressing the roof of the mouth with the tip of the tongue firmly had, had, mukande. Pressing. and then we release it and for the next cycle of the mantra we repeat that navel in navel in press the roof of the mouth with the tip of the tongue the eyes are rolled all the way up to the top of the skull the crown of the head Sahasrahara, thousand petal lotus. And you want to concentrate deeply to immerse yourself in the meditation, to experience the radiance of the crown chakra. Experience boundlessness. Feel yourself expand beyond time, beyond space, into a realm of total peace and joy. Sitting in easy pose, spine pulled up straight, chin pressed down lightly. And lastly, the mudra, the right hand is in the left. So I know I talked a lot, but there's just a few components. You feel like you got it, Angie? It's breathe in, breathe in, and then put the root of the tongue on the top, and then mukanda, you breathe out. Yeah, it's not, breathe, it's not you're breathing in. The breath is will be natural. But you're, oh, okay. you're pulling the navel in with that sound of HUD. HUD, Mukanda. Oh, okay, HUD, yeah. HUD, Mukanda. Right. And the eyes are rolled up and the hands are like this. Yeah, right hand to top of the left, thumbs touching. And yeah, HUD, HUD, Mukande. You just want to concentrate on those sounds. I'm going to play audio to keep us along with it. Can you hear the audio well?
Let everything settle, synthesize, and when you feel ready, complete, rest on the back in Savasana Corpse Pose. You may want to scan the body from toes to crown once or twice. Consciously relaxing. Breathing part by part.
resurrect your breath and begin the wake up series, wiggling fingers and toes, rotating wrists and ankles. Stretching the arms and legs. Taking cat stretch. We'll tune out with the sound of Satna three times. Inhale to begin. So. Satna. So. Satna. Bye. Bye.